Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. I'm Eric Lerner, Chief Scientist at LPP Fusion, and this is the first episode of our new podcast series. In our video series, The Real Crisis in Cosmology, we're looking at the scientific evidence that shows that the Big Bang Theory is not valid, that there's a different history of the universe than that described by the Big Bang. In this accompanying podcast, we're stepping back and asking, why does it matter? What difference does it make for life here on Earth in the year 2020, whether the universe started 14 billion years ago or 40 billion years ago or never really had a beginning at all? What's the connection between the cosmos and us? Clearly, lots of people do think cosmology matters. Just look at the breathless way the media covers new developments in the field. Sometimes it's front page news. A big part of the connection between cosmology and society is that over the centuries, people have generally projected their ideas about society onto the structure and history of the cosmos, and conversely have used ideas about the cosmos to understand what's happening or even what should happen in society. As a small example, just think about how the concept of black holes has entered common parlance. In addition to this ideological connection, there is a real scientific connection. We ourselves are products of cosmic evolution. Our sun and earth emerge from this process, and biological and social evolution are also part of the evolutionary process occurring in the universe. Learning in an accurate way about cosmic evolution can help us understand the evolution of our own society in the here and now because we're not separate from the cosmos, we're part of it. Since we are part of the universe, the physical processes we observe in the universe are the same ones that can occur here on Earth on a much smaller scale. So in the hugely important effort to harness fusion energy as the next energy source for humanity, what we learn from cosmic phenomena are a key to success. Indeed, the very existence of fusion energy was first discovered in the search for the source of energy of the sun and the stars. So let's look a little bit at this story. The Big Bang Theory tells a story of a universe that was wound up at the beginning by a gigantic explosion and has been running down sort of like an old watch since then. A universe whose future is preordained as one of expansion and cooling to nothingness, fizzling out to a state of final equilibrium. But once we realize that the Big Bang story is simply not true and not supported by scientific evidence, that's what we detail in our video series, then we're looking at a very different story. We're instead looking at a universe that observations tell us is running up, a universe characterized by accelerating evolution. Indeed, we can describe the whole evolution of the universe by a tendency to increasing energy flows, an accelerating move away from equilibrium, which is the state that has no net energy flows. Specifically, and this is a concept we'll be coming back to during this whole series, energy flux increases. Energy flux is the amount of energy flowing in a given time through a given area the density of energy flows. Not only does this tend to increase, but its rate of growth tends to increase as well. So the rate of evolution increases. There's a very different story we'll be telling than that of the Big Bang running down universe. Now this evolution is by no means smooth and steady. On the contrary, any given mode of evolution tends to be self-limiting. At a certain point, each mode of evolution starts to slow down, starts to enter into oscillations, and even begins to collapse. At such crises, new modes of evolution, emerging from the old ones, take over after a longer or shorter time, and again increase the rate of evolution for another period of time. Looking at evolution on the broadest possible scale, we can see that from what we know of evolution here on Earth, 
There have been three basic types of evolution in the cosmos that have succeeded each other. The first is physical evolution, the evolution prior to life that gave rise to galaxies, stars, and planets, and that here on Earth generated a chemical evolution that in turn gave rise to life. The second broad mode of evolution is, of course, biological evolution. The third mode is the one that's shaping the Earth today, social evolution, the evolution of human society and the, the technology that makes such social evolution possible. Each of these three modes has its own very different dynamic of development, which we'll be discussing in this series. In turn, each broad mode of evolution has itself a history of submodes. each, again, a period of evolution emerging from an early crisis, an early limitation, overcoming that limitation and leading to a more enlarged energy flux, faster evolution, than encountering its own limitation and crisis. Thus, for example, we know that here on Earth, life started with chemotrophic bacteria, bacteria that depended on energy coming from within the Earth as chemical energy. This period of evolution was followed by one dominated by photosynthetic bacteria, which could exploit the vastly larger energy falling on the Earth from the sun. The oxygen that was produced by these photosynthetic bacteria as a waste product gradually poisoned the atmosphere, strangling the anaerobic bacteria that could not tolerate oxygen, until a third period opened up characterized by far more efficient bacteria that could use oxygen for metabolism. Social evolution, too, well, we know from history, has been characterized by broad periods in which societies evolved within certain parameters, Paleolithic hunter-gatherers, Neolithic agricultural societies, irrigation-based civilization, and so on, right up to today's global industrial capitalist societies. Each of these sub-modes of social evolution also encountered crises that led either to new societies, new forms of social evolution, or to prolonged retreats into dark ages. We're encountering such a crisis today. Right now, for humanity to move forward, we need both a new source of energy, fusion energy, and profound social changes that will come with that new source of energy. Understanding the process of evolution today is in part based on our understanding of the process of evolution as a whole. So understanding our present day history depends in part in understanding the history of the entire universe. In the course of this series, we're not only going to look at the history of the universe, we're also going to look at the history of the history of the universe. Because our ideas, the conflicting ideas about the history of the universe, didn't emerge over the past 10 or 20 years. They've actually been developing over the past 150 years. And we'll go into basically that intellectual development of how these ideas uh, emerged, how they were shaped by what was happening in society at the time, and how they in turn had an effect on society's idea about itself. In the course of looking at this history of ideas, we'll show how concepts of cosmic evolution have been tied up with other key questions of science, such as those in thermodynamics, in the nature of life, and in the scientific understanding of the consciousness that allows us to ask these questions in the first place. In the next episode, we'll start this journey by asking what is the earliest phase of cosmic evolution that we actually have observational evidence about. I hope you'll join us for that and for the other episodes here at LPP Fusion's podcast. If you want to help financially to support the podcast, the video series, and the crucial research on fusion energy and cosmology, please visit us at the LPP Fusion page of WeFunder.com and at our own LPPFusion.com page for investments 
and at our GoFundMe page for contributions of any size. Thanks for listening.